Joining me now is the host of KFI Radio's Later with Mo Kelly, expert on all things politics and current affairs, and tonight even North Carolina. It's Mo <laughs> Kelly, also a contributor inside the issues. Great to have you back, Mo, as always. Uh, I have some family in North Carolina, so it's always good to talk about North Carolina. Good to see you. Yeah, good to see you too, man. Glad to hear that. Hello to your family. And they know this well. I mean, North Carolina has suddenly become a very pivotal state for this race. It's sort of become a swing state in a way as well, right? We saw former President Trump making an economic address there. I put it in air quotes because people have timed it and said he spoke less about the economy and much more about other things. Uh, I guess I'll start with that Trump rally and what you heard in that economic address. Well, it was an economic message which seemed strange to me as if he were uh, trying out talking points, talking about tariffs, whether he would in implement a 10 percent or 20 percent tariff, but not exactly explaining what that would mean for the average consumer. It's one thing if you're going to tax imports. It's another thing if you're not going to explain that that's probably going to be passed on to the American consumer. So we don't know how that's going to land with everyday Americans. People are in the Midwest or even in the Deep South. So that was the thing that I found curious. But we'll see if he stays stays with that message or he again changes it, but it sounded like he was testing out different messaging points. Yeah, and I feel like that's a lot of what we're seeing from former President Trump as he regains his balance after the change at the top of the ticket. We can talk about that some other time, but let's go back to North Carolina and the fact that Vice President Kamala Harris visiting there on Friday also delivering an economic address. Folks who have seen it or are familiar with it say it will be sort of light on policy, which I suppose would make it a match from what we heard today from former President Trump. But what do you see from Kamala Harris's economic message so far? And how do you think she might tailor it to those in North Carolina who are expecting and haven't yet received infrastructure money for fiber optic cables from the Biden administration? No. No, they have not received that money. And lately, she's been testing messaging points as well, as far as they're going to not not tax tips on Social Security and that kind of thing. Uh, so I don't know if Kamala Harris has, um, uh, I'll say, settled into her messaging points. And this is not unusual. You have campaigns who are going to try things and see what the polling says after the fact. But here's the difference. Kamala Harris has a little bit of what I would call house money. She has momentum. And, and if she does no harm to herself, she can keep testing these messages and see what best connects with voters because they're more willing to receive what she has to say right now. And they're not used to hearing what she has to say, as opposed to Donald Trump. And I would argue that his message has been more stale as of late. And, he, and his being light on policy is not going to be this, uh, perceived the same way as Kamala Harris being light on policy right now, at least. And some of that messaging uh, sort of snafus so far from the Trump campaign and potentially also from the Kamala Harris campaign in terms of not necessarily providing a lot of messaging and riding the House money, as you say, is maybe what we're seeing in the Cook Political Report polling on swing states showing that in essentially all swing states, Kamala Harris is now narrowly in the lead, usually within the margin of error. That includes North Carolina. Georgia is at the moment a tie. Uh, what are you seeing as far as those swing states? Which are the ones that surprise you? Which are the ones you think uh, these campaigns will be focusing on the most? Well, although North Carolina is considered a battleground state, it's a battle which Democrats mostly lose. The only times that the Democrats have won North Carolina in a presidential election were 2008, Barack Obama became president, and 1976, over the past 50 years or so, and of course that was Jimmy Carter. But for the most part, Republicans win North Carolina. It has become more competitive since 2008, and it's a smaller margin, which makes it a battleground state. But it says, if anything, that the Republicans must win North Carolina. If they don't, history says that they will lose the presidential election. And so Republicans historically have gone in thinking that they're going to have North Carolina in their electoral college total but if they if they're not careful they may lose it you know mo a lot of people have been talking about previous in this election the double haters index that's voters who were kind of holding their nose about both candidates and i'm talking about president joe biden former president donald trump of course president joe biden no longer a candidate vice president kamala harris at the top of the ticket and so there's been some polling on those double haters and right now kamala harris is winning the double haters 58 54 to 24, I should say. In other words, Kamala Harris doing much better with those who were upset about both choices before she entered the race. How do you see that playing out moving forward? Can she hold on to that or is that just excitement? I think she can hold on to it, but the key word is excitement. It's one thing to not like either candidate 
and stay home and not like either candidate and feel that one candidate is far worse or you hate one worse. It, it, see, that's the thing. We have to talk about enthusiasm, not only for a candidate, but against another candidate. Joe right. Biden, I don't think Democrats were enthusiastic to vote for him as much as they were enthusiastic to vote against Donald Trump. And here you're having, uh, I, I would say, a confluence of events where you have the excitement to vote for Kamala Harris, at least in Democratic circles right now, uh, uh, paired with the excitement to vote against Donald Trump as well. And that's why you see that wide gap, I would submit humble. Uh, yeah, it makes a lot of sense. And a lot of people looking at what's the coalition, the winning coalition is going to be for both of these campaigns. Before I let you go, Mo, we just got a minute left. We're going to talk about the Intuit Dome opening up. Let's bring it back a little locally. Uh, very interesting times in Inglewood. Steve Ballmer's got the Clippers, got Intuit Dome tomorrow night. Bruno Mars is going to light it up with that halo board. What's your takeaways and what's your feelings about the Intuit Dome opening up? And who do you who would you like to see there? Well, it's a beautiful uh, building. It's three miles from my house. I drive by it just about every weekend because I usually go shopping or I go to the movies or ride around the corner. The traffic is going to be horrible, but it's going to be great economically once again for Inglewood. Of course, it's a complicated discussion about what that does for residents who are already there and struggling to get by economically. But overall, it is a good thing. It is going to obviously be great for the Clippers because what they've created is a fan experience probably equal to none in the NBA. If they can deliver a product on good as on the court, as good as the arena that they'll be playing in, if the Clippers will be talked about in ways that the Lakers will not be talked about. Uh, Mo, we had Rep. Maxine Waters and Mayor Butts of Englewood on this show talking about just that point, traffic, the Englewood Transit Connector. People can look that up. The, the transit is a big part of this. And, of course, we think about those folks who live in Englewood, but we also think about all the entertainment dollars coming in and all the big events like the ones that are happening tomorrow night. And, uh, Mo, as always, thank you so much for running the gamut, talking about it all. You do it like nobody else can. Mo Kelly. Thank you, my brother.